I now recognize the ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan, for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director Ray, thank you for being here. Over the past several years, Americans have seen their liberties attacked. Every right, every right we enjoy under the First Amendment has been assaulted. Every single one. Your right to worship, your right to assemble, your right to petition, freedom of the press, freedom of speech, every single one. There are places today where a full congregation can still not meet on a Sunday morning. Your right to assemble? Four weeks ago, I spoke to the New Mexico Republican Party in Amarillo, Texas. They had to go to Texas for freedom because they weren't allowed to assemble in their own state. Your right to petition your government? We sat here today on Capitol Hill having an important hearing with the director of the FBI, but our constituents can't come to their Capitol, lobby their member of Congress to redress their grievances because the Speaker of the House won't let them in. Freedom of the press? Maybe the best example is the President won't go to the border, the Vice President won't go to the border. When Secretary Mayorkas went to the border, he wouldn't let the press in the very facilities he was touring. And of course, freedom of speech, we all know what's happened to that. Big tech censoring conservatives, the cancel culture mob attacking anyone who disagrees with them, deplatforming the sitting president of the United States, Democrats writing letters to the network carriers telling them to take certain news organizations off their network, off their, uh, not off their platform. Freedom is under attack, and Director, a lot of Americans think you're part of the problem. Before you got there, the Comey FBI spied on the Trump campaign. Over the last three years, the FBI labeled the baseball field shooting where our friend and colleague Steve Scalise was shot, labeled that suicide by cop for three years. We know the guy set out to go after Republicans. He had a piece of paper in his pocket with six Republican names on it. But somehow the FBI thought it was suicide by cop. Thank goodness you've changed that. More recently, the FBI raided the New York apartment of Mayor Giuliani. The president's personal lawyer, former U.S. attorney, ran the Southern District of New York office. According to press accounts, he said he was willing to give whatever information you all wanted, whatever the Justice Department wanted, but no, you kicked in his door instead. How about the couple in Alaska? Paul and Marilyn Huper. They sure witnessed an attack on their liberty in an up-close and personal way. The FBI kicked in their door, handcuffed them, held them at gunpoint, interrogated them for four hours in their own home. There was just one problem. They had the wrong people. Had the wrong people. Took their phones, took their laptop, took a pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. There's got to be some irony in that. And then there's FISA. 2018, FISA Court Judge, uh, Judge Boasberg said there were major privacy violations by the FBI. 2019, Inspector General Horowitz did uh, two, uh, two investigations. First one was on the Carter Page FISA application. He found 17 errors in that, when 51 wrong or unsupported statements in that FISA application. 17 errors, 51 wrong statements. That's a nice way of saying 68 lies that were taken to the FISA court. Mr. Horowitz then looked at 25 randomly sampled uh, FISA application, specifically the Woods file, the underlying documents that supports what's taken to the court, and every single one he said there was a problem. Every, all 25. In four of them, he couldn't even find the Woods file. But the last time the director was in front of us, February of last year, you told us everything was fine. You said this, quote, Americans should not lose sleep over the FISA application process. But just two months ago, Judge Boasberg was back with another report and he said there are, quote, apparent widespread violations by the FBI of the standards they have in place to deal with Section 702 of FISA, which raises a sort of fundamental question. Why are you using the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, Act to spy on Americans, Director? I appreciate the tough job you have and, and the, the good work the good work that the vast majority of your agents, I think, do, but freedom-loving Americans have concerns about their liberty, but I think they also have concerns about the opportunity cost. When you're kicking in the door of the president's lawyer, when you're interrogating an innocent couple for four hours, when you're spying on Americans, then by definition, that means there are fewer resources going to stop terrorists at our southern border, stopping cyber attacks, prosecuting Antifa, terrorists, and other rioters who attack law enforcement, small businesses, the Capitol and did over a billion dollars of damage over the last year. And frankly, that there also means there's fewer resources to figure out where this virus started. 
So I, we're going to have some tough questions for you, Director. We appreciate you being here, and we trust that you're going to answer our questions. You're going to answer them directly. Because again, when you think about what Americans have had to live through, the rights that they have that have been infringed as, as, as citizens of this great country, it's a serious time. And so we hope you'll answer the tough questions that will come from the Republican side. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.